Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, PPR tutorial on market failure. Uh, first thing I would like you to do, pause the video and define what is meant by market failure. So hopefully you've got a market failure is when a market fails to allocate its resources efficiently. And I'm hoping you've also remembered the acronym to help you recall all your market failures. So see if you can write down pumping, please. Pause. So hopefully you've got public goods, unequal distribution of income and wealth, monopolies, positive externalities, immobility, and negative externalities. So we're going to go through some of the key theory in this video for market failures. First thing I need you to do is define what uh, public goods are and identify their characteristics. Pause. So hopefully you have that they are a missing market, therefore they are a complete market failure due to their characteristics, which are that they are non-rejectable, non-rival in consumption, and non-excludable. Okay, so next question, what problem, and can you identify any examples of public goods, please? So hopefully you've got that they create what's called a free market problem because of their characteristics. And some examples are national defense, street lights, and flood defense systems. Unequal distribution of income and wealth. It's a good idea to be able to define what is meant by income and also what is meant by wealth. So income is a flow of returns from owning factors of production. So it's things like wages, rent, and profits, whereas wealth is an accumulation of all the assets that someone owns. Um, so see if you can, you can draw it now, I'm going to go through it in a future video, but see if you can draw and, and name the diagram to show uh, the unequal distribution of income and wealth, and tell me a little about what coefficient that diagram helps you calculate. So hopefully you've drawn the Lorentz curve, and that Lorentz curve helps you create what's called the Gini coefficient. So if the Gini coefficient is zero, that means that income is equally distributed, and if it is one, it means there is maximum inequality going on in that economy. Um, see if you can now identify causes of inequality. Pause the video. So there's a few causes of inequality. Hopefully you've got some of them down. It's not an exhaustive list, but I would argue they're some of the main ones. Obviously you can go away and look up some more. And final question on inequality. See if you can identify or explain what market failures, why is inequality a market failure, please? So there are some of the market failures that arise due to inequality. Moving on to monopolies, see if you can define what is meant by a pure, working and dominant monopoly. Please pause the video. So a monopoly is a single seller, 100% of the market share. Working monopoly is 25% of the market, and that's one, the ones that the CMA are particularly interested in, as well as dominant monopolies which own 40% of the market share. Next question, define what is meant by monopoly power, please. So that is the ability to set prices. So you've also got barriers to entry, which are uh, formed in order to protect monopoly power. Uh, we've got three S's. So hopefully you, ha you can pause the video now and identify the three S's. So the three S's were structural, strategic and statutory barriers. Okay, uh, next question, why is monopolies a market failure? They're market failure because they restrict output and charge higher prices, creating allocative inefficiency. They're not allocating the resources as much as they should. They're not working at the market equilibrium. They're restricting output. Final question on monopolies, see if you can identify arguments for monopolies, so why they might be good, and see if you can remember the arguments against monopolies, please. 
So for, for monopolies, you have things like dynamic efficiency, which is reinvesting their supernormal profits into improving the quality of the final product. They might also experience economies of scale, which is whenever output increases, average costs fall. So that might benefit consumers in the form of lower prices. They might also be able to compete internationally. Like so domestically they're a monopoly, but in the in the international market they might not be, and you know the competition keeps them on their toes. And also through good regulation by the government, they will not hopefully exploit their uh, dominance within the market. And the arguments against are spew, so per service because of the lack of competition, higher prices, lack of efficiency, so allocative inefficiency, arguably productively inefficient, and also consumer welfare. So the, the restriction of output affects consumer welfare. The higher prices also reduces consumer surplus. Um, so externalities, I'm going to put positive and negative together. So see if you can define what an externality is, please pause the video. So externalities are a spillover effect onto a third party that are not involved in an economic transaction. So something else to bear in mind about externalities, they can be positive or negative, and they cause a market failure because the price mechanism does not take the social costs and social benefits of production and consumption into consideration. So first thing I need you to do now is define what are meant by private costs. So there's your definition of private costs. Now do the same for private benefits. There's private benefits. Uh, as previously mentioned, they don't take into account social costs and social benefits. So see if you can write down the formula as to what uh, contains uh, social costs and what includes social benefits. So social costs are private costs plus the externality, the external costs, and social benefits are the private benefit as previously defined, plus the external externality, the external benefit. So last two things now then please. Uh, firstly, pause the video and define what is meant by a merit good. So a merit good uh, are goods and services that have positive externalities associated with them, and the key thing to remember is they are under-consumed in a free market due to information failure. And the last thing then, pause the video to find demerit goods. Demerit goods are goods or services that have negative externalities associated with them <coughs> and due to information failures, they are over consumed in free markets. So an example of a merit good would be education. An example of a demerit good would be alcohol. Uh, lastly, immobility. So see if you can first off recall the two types of immobility and define what each of them are. So hopefully you remembered that you've got geographical and occupational immobility. So there is a definition for occupational mobility. They are barriers limiting the transition of labour from one industry to another. And geographical mobility implies barriers which restrict labour from moving. Okay, so occupational mobility is an issue that the UK are trying to uh, solve at the minute, trying to get people more skills, more social mobility, more qualifications so that they can, you know, react to a change in um, labour market. And geographical mobility is improved by things such as transport, reducing the cost of living in particular areas where the rent and cost of living is high. Um, and you can look other... Um, government interventions for both of them up. Okay, so that's market failure. You can replay the video, obviously, and have a go at answering all the questions. And don't forget to save or screenshot this um, image you have in front of you now to have all the information at hand. Thank you.